Thank you. The automatic ball retriever worked. No, jokingly, I don't have one, but it's, uh, it bounced off the, the tarp I got behind it and uh, came back. So we have a letter today that came in from to customer service. And this one comes from John Hilton. And John says, hi, where is the mitt on the backswing? I have most of your videos, but get confused. In one of your drills, I see that my arms cover my toe line on the backswing. In another place, I hear about turning about two inches inside my target line. Where is the mitt? Question mark, question mark. Halfway inside the aiming line, on the toe line. I know you have shown it somewhere, but I can't find it. Thanks for the help. Submitted by John Hilton. All right, and I'm going to, I'm going to read a second one that came in uh, on the same subject so we can cover and get another perspective of what they're asking for. And this one comes from Data Cash Helicar. Hope I said that correct. And he says, Hi, Surge. Have been using PPGS for about four years, but have not achieved consistency. I am 80 years old. Not being familiar with baseball, I would request you to explain the term catcher's mitt and to where the club has to be lifted to bring it up the tree on the toe line by the takeaway. Thanks. And that's again from Data. Okay, now let me get speed off camera for a second, and I'm going to get a couple of alignments arrows I have over here. Sometimes my wife uses them to stick them in in uh, pots to hold up flowers or whatever. So I guess she found another good use for them. All right, we're going to we're going to find out and discuss where the catches mitt is. This comes up fairly often, but it is critical. It is an absolute critical thing to non understand so you can do it to make a consistently good peak performance takeaway and lift the club up the tree. And in fact, I'm going to say we have two catches mitts. We have a catches mitt behind the toe line in the backswing, and we have a catches mitt in the forward up swing. And that's what helps us take away on the line, swing down the line in the down in the downswing, which we call the forward up swing, and into the forward catches mitt, then up the tree. Okay? So here's the catches mitt. The ball, this ball is on the aiming line. Okay? I'm addressing the ball. The takeaway should start where as soon as the club starts moving back, the toe should start moving across the line. All right, now I would say never have a line any thicker than what this club, this thing is, and it's about an inch, inch and a quarter with thickness from, uh, width of it, okay? So if your club face starts going outside the line, you know you're taking the club outside. If you immediately suck it inside like that and it comes inside too fast, you know you're coming inside. It should, it should take a couple inches for the club to get to get inside the line. I always say many times, go up against a floor, a floorboard and put it at the toe on line. If you can't start it, that means your, your pressure and is against the floor, the club head is pressured against the floorboard and you're pushing outward. You should be able, it should slide no more than an inch or so and, and the toe will start to remove itself from the aiming line because you're supposed to go in the catcher's mitt, toe up. Okay, so where is the catcher's mitt? If we, when I say in the catcher's mitt in a tree, we're gonna say that the tree, the width of the tree is between the two, the toe line and the aiming line, the toe line and the aiming line. All right, the catcher's mitt should be somewhere, if this is exactly the toe line right here, it's the actual center of the mitt should be an inch or two max inside the, the, uh, the aiming line. We're taking it back fairly straight on that aiming line, okay, in the catcher's mitt. And when we swing through, the forward catcher's mitt will be at the same distance in. Now, the height of the catcher's mitt depends on the golfer. I mean, it depends on, 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 on your body makeup. Say, taller golfers, whether, you know, taller to begin with, period, the father one's arms are from the ground, their arm, their, uh, their arm sockets are connected from the ground, their shoulder sockets are, the more, the more they lift the club up greater than a person closer to the ground. Now, people with the same height could have a, a minute difference in height if, say, they have shorter arms versus longer arms, or shorter legs versus versus longer legs and, and, and uh, may be the same height because of differences in other parts of their body. All right, so, but per se, it's going to be somewhere up in the air, no more than the center of the hand of the catcher's mitt, an inch or two max inside this line, inside the back of your aiming line. Okay, so when you stand here and you have your toes parallel left or right, depending on whether you're playing golf right-handed or left-handed, once you start your takeaway, you just with both hands, I always start to take away by the right hip and the right shoulder to square the torso, starts to turn a little bit, and that starts to 
and that starts the triangle to move in, a, in my mental imagery is always to feel like I move the club head first, the toe of the club head first, and then I'm moving it and I'm, I'm letting my arms rotate, the square gets the triangle moving to set the club head in motion. I always try to feel like I'm always moving the club head first. All right. I know that's not the case. I've been on biomechanical studies where say this moves like a 32nd uh, or a thousandth of a second before this moves, the toe. I get it going, I'm lifting it up and it catches me. It's pure lift. So that's why we squeeze our, our grip upward. This upward grip, squeezing upward activates the under muscles of your arm. That's the, those are the muscles that are used in lifting and pulling downward and then lifting back up in the swing. So we squeeze upward with the grip equally with both hands because I want both hands to have the same grip pressure and, and do everything with equal pressure, equal speed, equal force, equal everything. So I'm just going to lift it up and put it in that catches mitt. So in the takeaway, I just lift it up and there's the catches mitt. From there, with that little turn I make, there's going to be a little bit more turn going until my forward arm gets over the toe line, after which point there is no more turn once I reach this, it's all lift. All right? So a little bit of turn starts it into the catcher's mitt. I'm keeping it on line. Then I just keep turning my shoulders until I reach here, which for most golfers is going to feel like you haven't even turned. And that's, yet that's 70 degrees. So the first 70 degrees of turn from, from being right here to there is almost nothing. You feel almost nothing. And then there's no more turn once I reach the toe line, it's up. Then when I swing down, I hit the golf ball. I stay, I'm, I, the club is square at impact. It starts to rotate toe up in the, in the forward mitt, right? Because for every action, there's a reaction. So it goes toe up in the forward mitt. And then I keep turning until my body is relatively square to the target. So that now my right arm, my trailing arm, my back arm is over my toe line. And I come straight up over here. We don't go inside the sacred burial ground. Everything behind my toe line is the sacred burial ground. We don't go in the back swing and we don't get, we don't get it in the forward swing with, with, our, with our lead arm at the point. The lead arm in the back swing is the left arm. The lead arm in the forward swing is, the, is, the, is now the back arm. And so we keep, we keep your forward arm over the toe line in the back swing, no deeper. And we keep the trailing arm over the toe line and no deeper. Okay? So this is sacred right here. Sacred burial ground. So in the catcher's mitt right here and up. And the catcher's mitt in the forward swing is just an inch or so no more inside the aiming line in the forward swing. And it goes straight up. So basically I like to call this the aiming alley. If you can basically keep the club head and the, and the heel of the hand and the, and, the, and, and the entire club right to the end of the grip with, with your hands on it inside this, inside this line from takeaway to the top and then take away to the top. You keep the, in, you keep the club inside the aiming alley, you're going to have a good chance your ball is going to stay in the aiming alley and hit it pretty darn straight. All right, so hopefully this clarifies the, the catcher's mitt. I, I know I talk about this off and on because it's a, it's a very important point that if you understand and can do, this is basically the major thing to hitting the ball solid and straight. And I promise you, you can hit it straight. I've showed it to people at every, in lessons in, in golf schools that hitting the ball straight is, is very much a reality. As uh, some people say, hitting a ball straight is almost impossible, hardest thing to do. No, it isn't. If you, got, if you know the catcher's mitts and you, can, and you are on, 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 square and solid impact, you can hit it so straight, it, it'll be like a laser beam. All right, and then slightly cur any cuts of hooks or little draws ain't are not going to hurt you because if you start it straight and the ball never moves more than five or ten yards max in curve and you've been lined up well and started the ball down the middle, you almost can never be in trouble. All right, so the whole thing is hitting the ball straight is, is absolutely a reality, but it's only a reality with the peak performance golf swing because of the catches mitts and on, 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 square and solid at impact. All right, hopefully this, this definition and explanation really gets us clarified on the catches mitt all right and so for the search for today that's it and i'll be talking to you all again soon